So one thing you might not know, Alia, about Adam is that he is an avid home labber. Mm -hmm. And so what would a migration look like to the self-hosted if Adam were to mm. become our system administrator and run our Zulip community out of his home lab? Yeah. What would that look like? Yeah. Um, so it's pretty similar, except for you would skip the part where you email us and uh, okay. you would do that in One last yourself. step. Even easier, Adam. Exactly. Um, yeah, we have an installation guide um, that is pretty straightforward. We really do work hard to make it easy to um, self-host Zulip um, and also make it make the installation process as easy as possible. Um, really smooth update upgrade process uh, when you when the new version comes out. Um, so it's definitely a priority for us. And there's detailed documentation on how how you need to do everything. Um, so should be very doable for you. If that's Docker image that, that you enjoy. Yeah. You used to have a Docker image. Uh, yes. Uh, sorry, this is not the part that I personally work that's on okay. as nearly as much as uh, some other things. Um, All good. But yes, you hear that, Adam? They got a Docker image. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what aspects of Zulip Cloud, the hosted version, are completely inaccessible to you as a self hoster? Are there like specific features that you will never be able to use in self hosted, or is it all there, but you have to worry about backing it up and making sure it's up and all that kind of stuff? It is all there. So Zulip is 100% open source. There's nice. uh, there's nothing that we're like locking away from from self hosters. Um, if you self host, this is sort of the one thing that. So we do offer paid plans for self hosters. Um, you don't have to sign up for one, but they're oh. an offer. And um, the kind of two two things that two major things that we're providing with those paid plans. Um, so one is uh, mobile push notifications. So the way that um, App Store policies work, both on Android and iOS, is that uh, if you have a mobile app, which are apps are 100, also 100% 100 open source, but you probably want to use the app that we put in the Play Store or the App Store rather than kind of rolling your own, which is a yeah. whole, whole thing. And so um, the way those App Store policies work is that a single app can only get push notifications from a single server. It's kind of like a anti-spam security measure on their end. And so if you're self-hosted for your self-hosted server to send uh, notifications to the Zulip mobile apps, what you do is basically bounce that traffic through our server. And so that's a service that a lot of folks who are self-hosting choose to pay for mm -hmm. um, as part of our plans. And then the other piece is just support. So if you want, any kind of uh, support with running your Zulip server. So we there is community based support in, in the um, in our uh, development uh, chat. So we do folks do come by and get get some help there. But if you need um, SLAs or if you need something more more than just kind of like asking a question on chat and seeing if folks are around to reply, um, then we do uh, have support offerings as well. So those are kind of the types of types of uh, plans for self-hosted organizations. Mm -hmm. I did find uh, a repo, and I know that you may not be able to go deep on this. If you can, it's okay. <laughs> Is on your uh, Zulip org on GitHub. It's docker-zulip. So I assume this is mm -hmm. official. It's container configurations, images, et cetera, for all of it. There's a Docker Compose yeah, file. Yeah, so there, I guess the so. way the way it's described in our docs is it's an officially supported experimental Docker image. <laughs> okay. Official yet experimental. So yeah. you know, uh, tread softly, but uh, officially. Two lines in this Compose file. I mean, that's a lot of lines. So you've got SSL certificates set up for folks. You can set up a custom CA certificate if you want to. You can point to a different Git repo. So you can point to the official, or you can have your own fork which I think is pretty cool. And you're just a dark compose up away from running Zulu locally. Sounds pretty awesome. Yep. There is also an architecture document on your docs, which I found to be pretty good at describing the way the whole thing works mm -hmm. and the various parts, Postgres backend, they're using Redis and Memcached in certain areas. Um, it's a Django web app for the backend. And then there's a single page app, which is written in TypeScript, probably React, I'm not sure, for the web, you know, in browser experience. Obviously the mobile clients you mentioned 
are getting rewritten into, did you say Flutter? Mm -hmm, that's right. Yeah. And so they're all using that same backend API. Now, if you're self-hosted and you want to connect your web, your, your phone app to that, are you just basically saying like zulip.changelog.com? Like, would we just create a... Yeah, just when you sign in, you put in that URL bam. for your server and you're good. Wham, bam. What do you think, Adam? You want to uh, docker, dockerize us? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, now that's the that's the that's a great question, obviously. But now you have to be your own uptime for your own chat apps. That's that's the high price of that is self -hosted. the high price of self hosted. I would I would want to compare Zulip Cloud and yeah. other ways first, but I'm not against the idea of self hosting. I just think it takes a lot of responsibility to do so. Yeah. Um, I assume how how then maybe you answered this already, and I was reading docs or the doc compose file while you said it. No worries. And if I missed it, I'm sorry. But how does like your iOS Android app work with a self-hosted scenario? Do you point it at like a URL kind of thing? Like if I was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay, so when, when user... answered. No worries. Yeah. So when users Repeat log yourself, in, they... when users log in, they'll just uh, put in the URL for your server and then you yeah. get to go. Yeah. You just C name a subdomain and you're good. To yeah. Go. So self-hosting yeah, I mean, you, you would have to have, even if it was like literally self-hosting in a closet or self-hosting on DigitalOcean, render, yeah. those are two that are mentioned in your docs. We obviously prefer Fly, fly.io. Not Sponsor. paid to say that, but just definitely <laughs> very passionate. Um, so I guess we can self-host on Fly, right, Jerry? Like we wouldn't have to self-host anywhere. I just thought yeah, it'd be I mean, cool to run it out of your closet. I mean, we have, it would we be even cool, have a... except for, I think, I don't know if the uptime would be as good. I mean, uh, the ping, the latency, Gerhard may have opinions about it. It's just sure. chat, you know, like it is worst case chat. scenario is we can't send each other memes for a few hours. Uh, I mean, we've had, we've had folks self us Zulip uh, air gaps, like on a ship. Oh, really? Uh, where they weren't going to have uh, connectivity with the wider internet, just as there's chat within, within that uh, cool. ship community. Yeah. So if we ever decide to travel the world, maybe on a sailboat, yeah, like our friend Alex McCaw did, we could uh, have Zulip on that on that sailboat with us. That would be cool. <laughs> Self-contained Zulip, and I guess uh, local area network only, right? So, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Might not be required if you have a. You could even go you know, five local people machine on your boat, only. But... <laughs> you know, you could unplug that machine from the whole internet and have Zulip just on that machine if you wanted to. Truth. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> Not very terminal, useful that way, but the you terminal can do app it. even. Yeah. 